7.30 was privileged today to speak exclusively to two former Australian Prime Ministers, Paul Keating and John Howard, for their views. First, Paul Keating. He believes the election of Donald Trump should herald Australia's move away from the US as its key alliance. Mr Keating, always a pleasure to have your company. Thank you, Lee. With the election of Donald Trump, can Australia continue to depend on the United States alliance the way that it has? Well, look, I think this whole question about our subordination to the United States <clears throat> in the sort of broad policy terms, this society of ours is a better society than the United States, than the society of the United States. I mean, it's more even, um, it's more fair, uh, we've had a 50% increase in real incomes in the last 20 years. M Median America has had zero, zero. We have universal health protection, yeah, from the cradle to the grave. We have a retirement income system with superannuation. You know, we have high participation rates in schools. Um, uh, we don't shoot our children in schools. And if they were to be shot, we'd take the guns off the people who shot them. The Americans do not do this. This is a better society than the United States. And therefore, the idea we should get around like Uriah Heep, as we're some sort of subordinate outfit that has to get a signal from abroad before we think, is, of course, a complete denial of everything we've created here. And we should be thinking in the same way in foreign policy terms. And in foreign policy terms, we're getting the message from, from President-elect Donald Trump that he's a big power guy and he's not for alliances. Like, wink, wink, you may be on your own. So how do we you know, respond to that? Maybe on your own. How do we respond to that? Like grown-ups. Like we should have always responded all the years through. We, we've got to this sort of almost sort of crazy position now where the American alliance, instead of simply being a treaty, where, where the United States is obliged to consult with us in the event of adverse strategic circumstances, it has now taken on a reverential sacramental quality. It's like a sacrament. You know, and this, I'm not talking about simply the government, I'm talking about some people on the, on the Labor side as well. You know, there, there's, a, there's a view. We, there was a thing called the, the American, Australian-American Dialogue, which, by the way, I've never attended, which is a sort of a cult thing. It's gone on for years. And I don't know what the Americans put in the drinking water, but whenever the Australians come back, they're all bowing and scraping and going on. I mean, what we have to do is make our way in Asia ourselves with an independent foreign policy. So give me some examples of how you would practically <clears throat> do that. Well, the alliance still exists. It's a treaty. We, we, get, we get intelligence from it. Uh, under the alliance capability... Under the alliance, we... We have access to better technology, defence technology, than a comparable state would have. But our future is basically in the region around us, is in Southeast Asia. And what we should be thinking about is, is a an independent policy which does worry about Indonesia, that does worry about Southeast Asia. I mean, I've suggested, for instance, we should join ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Yeah? Um, in other words, we'd actually be more useful to the United States, by the way, if we were doing these things, you know. Um, and, and, of course, that puts us in some point of independence with the Chinese. I mean, I mean, Beijing is 11 flying hours from Australia, from our capital cities, 11 flying hours. I mean, there is no, there's no geostrategic problems with, with China in this respect. But... but you know, we're being hounded on by American admirals to run ships through the South China Sea and create all these sort of issues. Whereas what President-elect Trump is telling us, you can see from Trump style, he's a big power guy, right? He, he, he brought NATO into question. He said, we don't really want... we better to get along with the Chinese. Now, just, just take that idea. The US is better to get along with the Chinese. What does this mean? It means there will not be a, an attempted or maintained strategic hegemony by the United States over China in the Western Pacific Ocean. Now, if that's the case, this opens up the whole foreign policy opportunity. But instead of that, we had the Prime Minister almost saying prayers to the alliance yesterday and, 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 and the Foreign Minister, you know, as, as, if, as if nothing has changed. What would you, you say know? to reassure Australians, though, who might 
think, OK, Australia, we've always had a relationship with a great and powerful protector, first the UK, then the US, and our shared values with those two countries um, are more substantial than any values that we would share with any country that, in Asia. That is, that is true, but, but, but what is this sort of latent fear about? I mean, who is about to attack us? You know, it used to be always Indonesia, and of course, in the end, they never did attack us. And now the whispered words, China, you know, uh, and yet China so far, and yet is our major trading partner. I mean, isn't an independent, balanced foreign policy the right answer? Or do we stay in a crouch saying Hail Marys to the Alliance? I would you know? guess that uh, the current government and probably the Labor leadership would say we do operate an independent foreign policy. Of course, we don't. The, the, the foreign policy of Australia is basically... A t we have tag-along rights to the US and we conduct our foreign policy, certainly since I left public office in the Howard years with Iraq, you know, and in years since we've had a, more or less a tag-along foreign policy, tag-along the United States. It's time to cut the tag. Time to get out of it. You said that Donald Trump is a strong man. If you were Prime Minister, how would you actually deal with him? Well, I like strong guys, you know. I mean, it's great, you know. Uh, I mean, look, he said some interesting things. <clears throat> Look, I wouldn't have voted for him at the, at the election. I would have voted for Hillary. But he said some interesting things. You may know, but you may not know, I, 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 I advised Bill Clinton in 1997 to wind NATO up, that trying you know, to bite bits of the pie crust off Russia would only bring us problems. So Trump says, can't we have a better relationship with Russia? Not a bad idea. Then he says, instead of the pivot to squeeze China down, he says... Can't we get along better with China? Can't we come to a better relationship with China? Not a bad idea. You know, there's two, two reasonable ideas there. Um, so there, there is some prospect that um, America is going to become more America-centric and less the template of 1947. The, the post-war multilateral template of the post-war years from 1947 essentially would change, I believe, under President Trump to a much more US-centric uh, foreign policy and much more US-centric focus. Not the exclusion of alliances, but as he, he's making it pretty clear, the Japanese pay for themselves, the Koreans pay for themselves. He says they can even have their own nuclear weapons, God forbid. You know what I mean? And so, uh, so do we listen to these messages or do we pretend that they haven't happened and we go back to the, you know, back to the prayer well of the sacrament of the Alliance. Mr Keating, we're out of time, unfortunately. Thank you very much for coming in. A pleasure.